Hi friends. So we're on chapter six. Um, things are really starting to heat up. Um, and before we read, I want to just go over a couple of quick things that are on the side right there. All right. So um, several times in the past chapters, Jessie refers to her experience with like girls in like second grade and like clubs and stuff. But we haven't really, that hasn't been explained to us exactly what that means. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that in this chapter. Um, and then I want you to think about who taught Jesse um, about kind of how other girls can treat girls and like, you know, how they can act towards other girls. And then what do all of those actions together tell you about Jesse and Evan's relationship? Okay, and it kind of ties into their spit vow that they made in the last chapter and some of the other things that we've learned about the brother and sister. All right, so chapter six, underselling. Pricing the same goods for less than the competition. Okay, so if you go to two stores and they both sell the same thing, but one of them sells it for cheaper, that's underselling. All right. Jesse knew that Evan was up to something. First of all, there were all those phone calls last night, at least 10 of them. Then he'd come knocking on her door this morning, asking if he could have the piece of foam core she had leaning against her bedroom wall. No way, she answered. That's for my Labor Day display. Oh, give it up. Today's Thursday. The contest is on Monday, and you don't even have an idea, Evan said. I do, too, have an idea. I'm just not telling you. Jessie still didn't have a clue about her Labor Day project, but she wasn't going to give Evan the satisfaction of knowing that. Then how come you haven't done anything, Evan said, pointing at the blank phone core and the bags of untouched art supplies? You're supposed to have pictures and types of information and a big title. It's supposed to look like a school report. Jessie scrunched her eyes and pursed her lips in a, you're such an idiot look. Don't worry. It's going to be great, and it's going to win first prize. And anyway, Mom bought all the supplies for me, and I'm not going to give anything to you. Jessie heard Evan mutter, miser, just as she slammed the door in his face. And now three of Evan's friends were over, Paul, Jack, and Ryan. All three had showed up with paper bags, and they were all in the garage making a lot of noise with a big keep-out sign taped to the door. Not that Jessie would have gone in there anyway. Who cares what a bunch of boys are doing? But she wished Megan had invited her to come over before lunch instead of after. Jessie went into the kitchen to make a turkey sandwich. The boys had left a slimy mess of peanut butter, Doritos, and yes, sticky puddles of lemonade mix. Jessie quickly looked in the trash can under the kitchen sink. There were 12 empty cans of frozen lemonade mix. 12. That was 96 cups worth of lemonade. 96 possible cells. Holy cow! Where had Evan gotten the lemonade? He hadn't gone to the store, and he didn't have any money anyway. Then Jessie remembered the paper bags that Paul, Ryan, and Jack had carried in. She bet the boys had all raided their freezers and bought over the stash. That didn't seem fair. She and Megan had to buy their lemonade today using the money they'd made yesterday. How were they going to stay ahead of the game if the boys had free lemonade to sell? Think, Jessie, think, she whispered to herself. She couldn't let those boys win. By the time she'd finished her lunch and cleaned up her mess, she wasn't going to lift a finger to clean up the boys' mess. She had the beginning of a plan in her head which is why she found it doubly confusing when she knocked on Megan's, sc Megan's screen and Carly Brownell came to the door. Jessie had been all ready to say, I've got a great idea. But then there was Carly looking down at her like she was an earwig. Um, is Megan home? Asked Jessie. Carly didn't open the screen door as she looked left and right behind Jessie. Where's Evan? Huh? said Jessie. Megan came running down the stairs carrying bottles of nail polish. Oh, hi, Jessie, she said, opening the door. She poked her head out and looked around. Where's Evan? He's at home. Why? 
asked Jessie. Carly made a noise like a snorting hippopotamus. I thought you said he was coming, said Megan. No, I didn't, said Jessie. You said it would be fun to make a lemonade stand with all three of us, and I said, yeah, that would be fun. So didn't he want to, asked Megan. I never asked him, said Jessie. Oh, I thought you were going to, said Megan. Then you should have said, hey, Jessie, ask Evan if he wants to make a lemonade stand tomorrow. And then I would have asked him. This is exactly what drove Jessie crazy about girls. They always said things halfway and then expected you to get the other half. And Jessie never got the other half. Carly gave Megan a look. Jessie wasn't positive what that look meant, but she was pretty sure it wasn't a nice one. That was the other thing that Jessie hated about girls. They were always giving looks. Looks that contained all kinds of strange and complicated messages. Last year in second grade, there had been four girls who were always exchanging looks with one another. Becky Baker, Laura Lee Sun, Andrea Hennessy, and Eileen Garrett. Jessie watched them and knew that Evan was right. They talked without words. They used their eyes to pass secret messages. She also knew they didn't like her, but only because Evan had finally explained it to her over Christmas vacation. Jessie was surprised when he told her this. They laughed so much. How could they be mean? They were the four who started the club, the Wild Hot Jelly Beans Club, or as they called it, the WHJ Club. Becky was president, and she was always telling the others what to do. They made signs and paper buttons and membership cards. The teacher, Miss Soren, didn't usually allow clubs in the classroom, but she made an exception, telling the girls, I'll let you wear your buttons in class, but only if you let all the other kids join, if they want to. By the end of the day, every kid in class was wearing a WHJ button, even Jessie, who'd never belonged to a club before. And it seemed like Becky was being so nice to her. That should have been your first clue, Evan told Jessie later. Becky made extra buttons for Jessie and even helped tape them all over her shirt. And she made a special membership card for her and even a WHJ sign that she helped Jessie glue onto her writer's workshop folder. Jessie remembered all the girls laughing and Jessie laughing too. And all those strange looks that Becky and Lorelai kept and Andrea and Eileen kept flashing back and forth, like secret notes passed in class that Jessie could never read. The very next day, Mrs. Soren collected all the buttons, gathered up all the membership cards, and even replaced Jessie's writer's workshop folder. No club in the classroom, she said. I made a bad choice by allowing it even for one day. On the playground, Jessie went up to Becky. Why is she breaking up the club? she asked. Becky gave her a sour look. She'd been grumpy all morning. Don't you get it, you dummy? WHJ doesn't stand for wild hot jelly beans. We just said that to Miss to Miss Soren. It stands for We Hate Jesse. It's the We Hate Jesse Club. And everyone in the class is a member. Jessie stared at Becky. Why did they hate her? What has she ever done to them? It didn't make sense. And then Lorelai, Andrea, and Eileen had laughed, and even Becky had managed a smirky grin. Jerks, Evan said later, when Jessie told him the whole story. They've got rocks for brains. But Jess, you've got to be on the lookout for girls like that. Standing in Megan's front hall, Jessie stared at Carly. Something inside told her Carly was a girl like that. Look, said Jessie, it doesn't matter. Evan can't come over. He's busy. And we've got to get going on our lemonade stand. I've got a great idea. We don't want to do a lemonade stand, said Carly. Jessie looked at Megan. It's just that... Megan fiddled with the bottles of nail polish in her ham the same way she'd fiddled with her band bracelets the day before. It's kind of hot, and we did the lemonade thing already, and now Carly is over, so 
You know, you said you wanted to, said Jessie. And I thought you liked me, she added in her head. She felt her lower lip tremble. Not now, she shouted and sighed. Don't be a big baby. Megan stood there saying nothing, fiddling with her bottles. Then she turned to Carly. Oh, come on, Carly. It'll be fun. We made a ton of money yesterday. And it was really fun. Carly crossed her arms, tightened her lip, and raised one eyebrow. It was amazing how high she could raise one eyebrow. Jessie had never seen an eyebrow go that high. Oh, come on, Carly, Megan said again. Carly didn't move a muscle. Well, then I guess... Megan's voice trailed off. She clicked one bottle of nail polish against another so that it made a tapping sound that filled the silence. I guess me and Jesse will do the lemonade stand alone then. Carly dropped her eyebrow in her arms. What ever, she said as she walked out the door. Spend the day, spend the day babysitting if you want. The screen door slammed, followed by a huge back, bucket full of silence. Whatever, said Megan, imitating Carly's voice. Jessie laughed, even though she was still stinging from the babysitting remark. Thanks for doing the lemonade stand with me, she said. Are you kidding, said Megan. She's such a stuck-up jerk. I didn't even invite her over. She just rode by, and I said that you and Evan might be coming over, so she just walked into the house. Are all the girls in fourth grade like her, asked Jessie. She tried to sound casual. Some are, some aren't, said Megan. She sat down on the stairs and opened a bottle of sky blue nail polish. With quick expert strokes, she started painting her toenails. Hey, that's right. You're going to be in our class this year. That's so weird. Jumping a grade. A lot of people skip a grade, said Jessie. Really? I've never met one before. Here. Do your toes green, and then we'll be coordinated. Jessie ended up getting more polish on her toes than on her toenails, but by the time they were done, Jessie had explained her plan for the day. Value added. See, she said, pulling the ten bright ideas to light up your cells from the back pocket of her shorts. She turned to bright idea number two and pointed with her finger. Value added. Something extra such as a special feature or attractive packaging added by a company to a product that makes the product more desirable in the marketplace. That means we give customers something extra they didn't expect, explained Jesse. I mean, anyone can go home and mix up their own batch of lemonade, right? So if we want them to buy from us, we have got to give them something extra. We add value. Great, said Megan. What are we going to add? Well, how about chips and maybe pretzels? Everyone likes chips and pretzels. We'll just have a bowl on the table, and anyone who buys lemonade can have some free snacks. So we're adding value. Snacks. Yeah, except Jessie has stayed up late last night reading her mom's booklet. You know what, what we're really adding? Fun. That's the one thing people can't get all by themselves. It looks like we're selling lemonade and snacks, but we're really selling fun, and everyone wants fun. Wow, said Megan. That's really smart. It'll be like a party. Who doesn't like a party? Jessie nodded her head. She carefully tore out the definition of value added from the booklet and put it in her lockbox. Her mother always said, some ideas are like money in the bank. An hour later, they were all set up. The lemonade stand was newly decorated with streamers and balloons. Three bowls of snacks, Cheetos, potato chips, and pretzels, were set on top. Jessie had lugged Megan's boombox all the way downstairs, and Megan was doing the DJ thing with her CD collection. It looked like a party had somehow sprung up right in the middle of the hot concrete sidewalk. To anyone passing by, the lemonade stand shouted out, Come over here! This is where the fun is! As soon as the music had come on, customers had started drifting over. One of the moms across the street set up sprinklers in her front yard, and soon all the kids in the neighborhood were running through the sprinklers and grabbing handfuls of Cheetos. Two women walking their dogs stopped for a nibble and ended up staying an hour. And three or four of the neighborhood mothers set up lawn chairs nearby and talked and ate pretzels while their kids ran through the water. 
But Jesse noticed a funny thing. Even though there was an endless buzz of activity around the stand and the chips were flying out of the bowls faster than Megan could restock them, they weren't selling much lemonade. Hey, Jordan, said Jesse as a four-year-old boy ran by in a bathing suit. Don't you want a cup of lemonade? Jordan dive on the pretzel bowl and came up with a fistful. I had too much already. Four glasses. And off he ran. Four glasses, said to Jesse. Said Jesse to Megan. He didn't buy any. Mrs. Doran, don't you want a cup of lemonade? Sorry, Jesse, I have to pass, said Miss Doran. I already had I had two already, and I'm trying to cut down on sugar drinks. Where's everybody drinking so much lemonade? wondered Jessie. She looked down the road. Oh, wait a minute. Megan, hold down the fort, said Jessie. I'll be right back. Sure thing, said Megan, dancing to the music. This lemonade stand was the greatest idea. It's like a birthday for the whole neighborhood. Jessie headed down the road. As she rounded the bend, she prepared for the worst. Evan's lemonade stand cried with customers, but there was nothing. Absolutely nothing. The corner was deserted. She crossed the street and went to the garage. And there was a cooler, dirty and empty. And there were the stacked plastic chairs, four of them this time. And there was... Wait a minute. Those were new signs. Jesse pulled out three large pieces of foam core. On the back of each one, each one was part of the penguin project Evan had done the year in, last year in third grade. On the front were big letters. Slow down. Cheapest lemonade ahead. Cheapest lemonade in town ahead. Yesterday's prices. Today's lemonade. You won't believe your eyes. It's cold lemonade. Just 10 cents a cup. Jessie couldn't believe her eyes. Ten cents a cup? That was crazy. Even if they sold all 96 cups, they'd only make $9.60. And split four ways, that was just $2.40 for each boy. Evan was never going to earn $100 with that kind of profit. Jessie went down to the basement. Evan and Paul were playing air hockey. Wahoo! The puck flew into Evan's goal, and Paul threw his arms into the air in a victory V. Oh, snap, said Evan. You're winning. Winning? Winning? Are you kidding me? Said Paul. Then he dropped his voice to a gravely growl and said, I don't play to win. I play to pulverize. Just like that muscle guy actor and agent down. The movie that all the boys were talking about. Paul was even flexing his mu muscles like the actor, except that Paul didn't have any muscles, at least none that Jesse could see. When Paul saw Jesse, he dropped his arms. Hey, he said. Paul was Jesse's favorite of Evan's friends. He's always joking around with her, but in a nice way. And he never minded when Evan invited her to come along with him. Hey, said Jesse. What's up? Evan turned off the air hockey table. Nothing, he said. We were just going out. Paul dropped his hockey paddle onto the table and followed Evan into the garage. Jesse trailed behind. Where are you going? she asked. Down to the tracks, said Paul as he strapped on his bike helmet. We put pennies there this morning, so we're going to go get them now. Squash. You want to? Yo, shouted Evan. My bee, muttered Paul. So see ya, he said to Jessie. Jessie hated this feeling of being shut out like she wasn't wanted. Evan had never made her feel this way before. Even when sometimes he did want to be just with his friends. He'd always say things like, Jess, we're going to go shoot hoops, just the two of us. But when we get back, we'll play spud with you. So that she knew he still liked her, even when she wasn't invited along. But this, this was like he hated her. Like he never wanted to play with her again. And Paul was going right along with it. Jesse scowled. So you really cleaned up today at the lemonade stand, huh? She said. Yep, we sold out, said Evan. So what did you make, like $3? She asked. Actually, we made a ton. What was it, Paul? 
Forty-five bucks, said Paul. Jesse's mouth went slack. Forty-five dollars? There's no way, she said. Not at ten cents per cup. Oh, just the little kids paid that, said Evan. The grown-ups all gave us way more. That's too cheap, they said. It's such a hot day, and you're working so hard. Here, take a dollar. Keep the change. It was crazy. Unreal, said Paul. They kept pushing all this money at us, because they thought it was so sweet we were selling lemonade for a dime. We made a killing. Bright idea number five. Jesse remembered it, immediate, remembered it immediately. That's called goodwill, she said, slowly, picturing the exact page from her mother's booklet with a definition on it. Goodwill. An intangible but recognized asset that results from making slash selling good products, having good relationships with your customer and suppliers, and being well regarded in the community. It's when you do something nice in business and it ends up paying you back with money. She sighed. Why hadn't she thought of that? She would be sure to tear out that definition and put it in her lock box when she got back to the lemonade stand. Well, whatever. We cleaned up, said Evan. Even so, said Jesse, trying to find some way to prove to Evan that, that Evan had not had a good day selling lemonade. You had four people working the stand. So if you split $45 four ways, that's only eleven twenty-five each, which is still way more than I'm going to make today, she thought, since the whole neighborhood has already filled up on cheap lemonade. We're not splitting, said Evan. The guy said I could keep it all. Right, said Paul, all for a good cause. That's not fair, said Jesse. Sure it is, said Evan as he got on his bike and pushed off. In case you didn't know, that's what it's like to have friends. Evan crossed the street. Ouch, said Paul. TTFN, Jess, he followed Evan. Jesse was left standing alone in the driveway. Whoa. All right, so Jesse and Megan tried their own tactic to sell things. And Evan was a little more successful with his business model. Um, but did you learn anything about their relationship, Jesse and Evan's relationship? So in the last chapter, um, they made a vow to not fight in front of their mom. So they have respect for their mom. They get along in that way. And then it's also Jesse who's all, I'm sorry, Evan, who looks out for Jesse and kind of taught her about the way girls can act and treat each other and that she's got to be aware of when they're being mean and not, and they're pretending to be nice. So he, it's the whole book has shown that he does care about his little sister, but he's just really mad at her right now. And he can't get past that. So everything that has, they've experienced together in the past is just kind of like gone away. Cause he can't get past his anger with his little sister right now. So, all right. See you at chapter seven.